dear Christian friends, once again we welcome you to our devotions for the day. It has been our greatest pleasure in meeting you all this while. You have been part of our success and we are so thankful to God that he's brought us into a new year. A new year of beginnings. A new year in which I know you have made your resolutions and you are following with the help of God. For the rest of the week, we would be looking at a very important service of the Methodists, which is also taken on by other denominations, which is a jewel of the Methodist people called the Covenant Service. We will go through the history behind it, the focus, and the purpose for which this was instituted by our revered father, John Wesley. So for the rest of the days, please come along with us as we look at the covenant service of the Methodist people. I would like to begin by reading one of the hymns that is so dear and associated with the covenant service. The Methodist hymn 744. O happy day that fixed my choice on thee my Savior and my God. Well may this glowing heart rejoice and tell it raptures all abroad. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. I am your host, the Most Reverend Dr. Paul Kwabnabuafu, the presiding bishop of the Methodist Church, Ghana. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, this day we give you thanks and praise for bringing us into another season, another moment, and another year. You have been our help in ages past, seeing us through the passing year and bringing us to the beginning of the year 2020. We are so thankful for our very lives, our existence, and the peace which rests upon us. We meet at your feet, trusting you still as a God who goes before your people. That you holding our hands and taking us through will come to the end of yet this year with all the blessings that you have for us. As a nation, continue to be our shield and our portion. See us through it all. As a people, we have chosen to live like you. May we have the strength to go through it. And as we prepare ourselves, to once again covenant with you, give us the grace to go through it. This and many blessings we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear Christian friends, our Bible reading for today is chosen from Exodus chapter 24, reading from verses 3 through 
11. Exodus 24, 3 through 11. Let us hear the word of God. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And he said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heavens for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Beloved in the Lord, as I have mentioned, the Methodists organize a number of services on the grounds of faith, commitment, and pledge. And all these are aimed at bringing the people closer to God. These services are also meant to make them aware of their protection in the Lord Jesus Christ. One of such services at the heart of the Methodist devotions and discipleship is the annual covenant service held at the beginning of every year. The beginning of every year, the people called Methodists recognize again the great need of the grace of God and the need to express their community and personal covenant with God. At the beginning of every year, going back to the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 12 verse 30 and Luke chapter 10 verse 27, which we can summarize and say that the Methodist people every year will love and serve the Lord with all our heart, our mind, our soul, and our spirit, and our strength as well. This is what is in the covenant. But let me also introduce you to the idea that the covenant service is part of the jewels of Methodism. Most often people talk of the rich hymns set in powerful images as Methodism's main contribution to the liturgy of the church. The celebration of watch night which we have already talked about, and the covenant which will be celebrated in the first Sunday of the year, are two classified parts of the contribution Methodism has made to the church. 
in the service of covenant. The church joyfully celebrates God's gracious offer to Israel in which God says, I will be their God and they shall be my people, which is extended to all people in Jesus Christ. In the service, the people who come to worship are invited to renew their covenant relationship with God and give their lives and choices to Him anew. In this service, which is also a renewal, it's a call on all worshippers, especially the Methodist people, to rely on the grace of God and trust in His rich promises as He gives to His people. In this service of covenant, one of the most significant parts is the bidden, which is the call to covenant and the prayer. And the congregation is invited to begin the new year with a renewed commitment through this covenant prayer. And the, in the Methodist Church, the emphasis has been on the importance of doing as much as believing in the rich promises of God. This annual service is so special to the people called Methodists such that in Ghana Methodism, it has a constitutional provision. In SO 31 Zero, the constitution of the Methodist people stipulates, among others, that every effort shall be made to ensure that the covenant service is held annually in all societies where members of a village are enabled to do it. The superintendent minister must arrange to have a covenant for them in which the sacrament of the Lord's Supper shall be observed. It is so crucial that the constitution is very clear that every society, every member should come to covenant with the Lord at the beginning of every year. In the call to the covenant service, the ministers are told that the covenant service is a principal service and it means that it is not to be added to any other service. When we meet as a people to celebrate the covenant, it is the sole service that is being held and I believe that all of us are preparing, having gone through the watch night, are preparing towards the covenant service for 2020. Our discussion here would focus on our heritage, its purpose, its focus, and the relevance and how we ought to approach. Because sometimes we have misgivings and misconceptions about even the prayer and why we have to organize it every year. And my prayer to you, as you listen to me, whether you are a Methodist or not, it is that you will understand the significance of the covenant service and you can fully participate in it. Dear Christian friends, let us now look at the covenant service from a historical background. The idea of covenant was so basic to our revered father John Wesley's understanding of Christian discipleship. And this year, we are looking at discipleship, 
teaching everyone to live like Jesus Christ. Here was one mode of bringing people into discipleship. And Wesley recognized that the Methodists needed not just to accept Jesus, but also to grow in relationship with God. Over a number of years, he gradually saw the need for some regular ceremony which would enable people to open themselves to God more fully. So the covenant service was aimed at helping people, helping the Methodists, helping the worshipers, just as it will do in our time to hear God's offer and challenge ever more deeply and, and also allow God to prompt and enable us to respond to his call of relationship. In the year 1755, John Wesley created a form of service which he adopted from the works of Joseph Richard Allen. These works had come from the Puritan tradition of pastoral and spiritual guidance in having relationship with God. Wesley insisted that the covenant service be located in a framework of pastoral care, preaching, and guidance so that the people could have a fuller understanding of who they are and how they ought to live with the Lord. And so he wanted a form of worship in which the people will know that God is calling them into a relationship. In August 1755, Wesley refers to an occasion where he conducted a service that provided opportunity for persons to make or renew their covenant with God. And so this was the first of the Methodist Covenant Services in August 1755. Wesley, in his journal, gives an account on, in the following words. I mentioned to the congregation another means of increasing serious religion, which had been frequently practiced by our forefathers, namely, the joining in a covenant to serve God with all our heart and with all our soul. He says, he explained for several mornings and on Friday, many of the people kept a fast to the Lord. And in that, they beseeched the Lord to give them wisdom and strength to make a promise unto the Lord our God and to follow it. He also explained to the people once more the nature of such an engagement. It is a covenant and the manner of doing it acceptably to God. And then he said, at six in the evening, we met for that purpose. And this was on Monday, August 11th, 1755. He says in his journal again, after I had recited the tenor of the covenant proposed, all those who desired to give testimony of their, of their entrance into this covenant stood up and according to Wesley, about 1,800 members who had gathered, gave up their lives and covenanted or renewed their covenant relationship with the Lord. And he said it was an, an encounter which he never saw before. Dear friends, just as we're looking at the historical background, from 1755, this continued, and the success of this 
covenant renewal encouraged John Wesley to have it published as a pamphlet in 1780. And so what we are going through has come to us from generations from the 18th century and he urged every society to conduct such a service once a year. So we are only following our tradition. We are only following what generations of Methodists have made over the years. Though there might be uh, changes to what John Wesley wrote, but the tenor and the import has been the same. And this is what we call all of us to look at and to revisit our roots as the people called Methodists. In the covenant as was written for us by John Wesley, there are words both of inviting us that traditionally precedes the prayer and the prayer itself. Because we, later we'll come to look at the prayer, the covenant prayer. But the biddings traditionally include phrases such as, Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy and others are difficult. All these are to prepare the minds of the people who are covenanting with God. And he said, some of the work of the Lord bring honor, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and temporal interests. Others are contrary to both. Yet, this is the powerful point. Yet, the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. So these words come to look and tell us that even as we come to covenant with the Lord, we don't have the strength to do it. And the assurance is giving that God will strengthen us. So let us look at who are the principal persons in this covenant. First, we have God. It is God and man. If we define a covenant in terms of an agreement, a compact, or a bargain between two persons, covenants are legal agreements between people. And here we see that God is on one side and man is on the other side. Move. God as a person has been known to have made covenants with individuals and nations since creation to this day. So we know him as the covenant making God. We even sing covenant keeping God there is no one like you. That is why we call God a covenant-keeping God. Beloved in the Lord from the Bible, we can talk of people who had covenant with God. Talk of Noah in Genesis chapter 9, reading from verse 8 through to 17. So do we read of Abraham, Genesis 15. We talk of the people of Israel in Exodus chapter 19 through to 24. Then come to talk of King David in 2 Samuel. But we also know that the Lord wanted to have a new covenant with his people. And in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34, we have what we call the new covenant, where God was going to be in the heart of the people. Basically, therefore, a covenant with God is an agreement between him 
and us or between him and humanity. And the agreement is, he will be our God and we shall be his people. Very, very, very significant. I want to repeat that. The covenant we are about making or looking forward to making on this coming Sunday is that we are saying he will be our God and we shall be his people. To be in covenant with God means that he has agreed to be our God and we have also agreed to be his people. Let me also say that the covenant is not a contract in which God and human beings agree to provide particular goods and services for each other. Rather, the covenant is the means of grace by which we accept the relationship and then seek to sustain it to the glory of God. It is therefore not so much about getting into a relationship with God as it is about staying in it. That's, that's the point that I want you to know that it is not just the mere relationship but as to keeping it, as to staying in it. And the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. And in Jeremiah chapter 31, he says, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. These words are read out as part of the covenant service which we are about having with the Lord. Again, we also know of man making covenants. And that one we can talk of marriages as covenants, people getting employed, and that one they can talk about it as covenants. And then even with citizenship, where we talk about it as covenants or agreements between man and man. The nature of God's relationship and dealings with humanity shows that he is indeed a God of covenants. And as part of the liturgy, some of the words that are read to bring home the idea and the fact that we have met with a God who is so personal and who is always covenanting with his people. These words are read by the liturgists. God covenanted with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation, choosing to bear witness to his steadfast love by finding delight in the law. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ. In him all people will be set free from sin and its power and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us to renew the covenant which bound them and binds us to God. So these are some of the words that are read. Beloved, in the light of this, we come into the annual covenant service, bearing in mind one thing, that on the other side of the agreement is God. And we, humanity, on the other side. It is also to be known that we don't come as corporate, even though it's a whole church meeting 
to observe, it is the individual who is called upon to covenant with God. And this is what I want us all to note. We would also ask, why should it be annual? Why would Wesley want his people to observe this annually? From the brief discussions on the meaning and the examples of covenant, we would answer this question as to why annual or about the annual nature of the service because some modern day members would not understand. Indeed, we can say that this covenant with God is perpetual, yet it ought to be renewed year by year. This is an anniversary we celebrate as in the renewal of a marriage vow for a couple. It is also an opportunity given to members every year to renew their relationship with God, to reestablish their relationship. And sometimes we know how frail humans we are. We fail. And sometimes we are found unreliable, we are found wanting, we are found unrealistic. So it becomes an opportunity for us to come before this covenant-keeping God. Man, just as you will bear witness, has on many occasions, if not at all times, violated this part of the agreement. Individuals find themselves in the grips of the law because they have failed to observe the agreement. And this calls for the annual celebration and annual observance of this service. So the covenant service is annual because of our human frailty and limitations. And because we failed God, we disappointed him, we gave him up. So a new opportunity at the beginning of the new year comes and we need to come back to him. It is annual because of the coldness and unworthiness of our worship in the course of the passing year. We need to come periodically, annually, because of the many occasions when we rejected, we denied and abandoned, refused and sometimes doubted the rich promises of God. This service gives new opportunities to trust the Lord who covenanted afresh when the people of Israel failed their part of the covenant. So what is the aim and the focus of the covenant service? In this exercise, the main stare and focus of this service is praise, thanksgiving, penitence, that is confession, commitment, and rededication. And the covenant service is a celebration of thanksgiving for all that God has done and an affirmation that we give our lives and choices to Him. It is an invitation to renew our covenant relationship with God. Dear Christian friends, as I have mentioned, God bringing us into another year gives us the opportunity to come back to him and renew our relationship with him. And our revered father, John Wesley, would call for this important worship called the covenant service.
which we are preparing ourselves to celebrate this coming Sunday. We have looked at the importance of the covenant service, how the Methodists have contributed to the church's life with the watch night and the covenant service. We have also looked at the historical background, why Wesley wanted this service to be held annually and periodically. It was one of the mainstays of his discipleship so that people will not, will not just come to accept the Lord, but they will stay in constant union and fellowship with him so that they could live and they could do all their things like Jesus Christ. This year, we have chosen for ourselves the theme discipleship, teaching everyone to live like Jesus Christ. Having come this far with a background and knowing that the God we serve is a covenanting God and he keeps his covenant, but we sometimes fail and we sometimes deny him. It is a call afresh to all and sundry to come and be part of this service on Sunday and renew our relationship with him, this covenant keeping God. Let us pray. We bless your name, our eternal God, who from the beginning of ages has never abandoned your people midstream. But even when we were running away from you, you came to our rescue. You are the God who has kept your promise of the covenant at all times. We deny, we reject, and we refuse you. But you give us opportunities. You are the God of second chances. And yet, another year, you're calling your people in the year 2020 to come into your presence to renew and to reestablish our friendship with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Grant us the grace, O Lord, to keep our covenant part and that you being our God, we will continue to be your people, not just as individuals, not just as a denomination, but even as a nation, we will look up to you as the God who is always keeping your covenant of being our God. Help us and be with us and grant us the grace to go through. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving and adoration. Amen. 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 Amen.